just hit me. Yes. Uh. Oops. Sorry. I gonna soon make it it a little. What a stupid idea. I mean, a stupid camera. <sighs> Here we go. Today we're, I think we're gonna review this book, The Secret Garden. I mean, let's just read this book to be quicker. I know this, this is long, but I, I want some people who is, who is blind, who is blind can hear some stories too. So, let's get on to read this. The Secret Garden In the scorching heat of a garden in India, Mary Lennox stamped her foot. Fetch me a drink, now, she ordered. Instantly, Severin rush, rushed to obey. Meanwhile, Mary began to make a pretend garden, sticking flowers to a hot, dry earth. It's look all wrong, she muttered. Glancing up, Mary saw a beautiful woman stole, strolling past, surrounded by an admiring group of army officers. Mother, cried Mary. She rushed forward, but Mr. Lennox brushed her away, got her away, as she always did. It was Mary's last glimpse of her mother. Over the next few days, a terrible fever, Jolera swept through her parents' house. Her mother and father died, along with many of their servants. Mary shut away in a nursery, never caught a cholera, but she was left alone in the world. After that, Mary was passed around like a package between her parents' friends until a letter came from her uncle, Mr. Craven. Dear Mary, I have made arrangement for you to come to England and live at Miss Waite Manor. My housekeeper, Mr. Smedlock, will meet you in London and escort you here. I'm afraid I won't see you for some time as I have to travel to Europe on business. Your sign. Sincerely, Archibald Craven. No one cares what I want, Mary thought, but she had nowhere else to go. Several weeks later, Mary was sitting on a cold carriage, opposite of a turn-looking Mr. Smedlock. What's that whooshing noise? Mary asked as they drove a cart across a bleak landscape. It's the wind howling across the moor, Mr. Smedlock replied. What's a moor? asked Mary. Miles, miles of empty land, and the manor is right in the middle of it. I hate it already, thought Mary. How, hmm, how many servants will I have? she asked. Mr. Smedlock looked sharp. I didn't know how it was in India, she said, but there you take care of yourself. They arrived late at night. Mr. Smedlock marched Mary across a huge hall of steep hairs, stairs, and along twisting corridors. Your bedroom, she announced. At last, 
flinging open a door. You must stay here unless you're going outside. Oh no! On no account must you go poking about the house. As soon as Mary stepped into her room, Mister Smedlock shut the door and hurried off. Why did she hurry off? I wonder that. Mary looked around. It was not a child room. Tapestries hung on the wall, and in the middle stood vast four poster bed. Outside, the wind howled like a lonely person, lonely as Mary. Then a、uh, another noise pierced pierced the wind, a far off sobbing sound. That's not the wind, Mary thought. It's a child crying. Who is it? She was itching with curiosity, but she didn't dare disobey. This Mister Smedlock. Finally, worn out from her journey, she fell asleep. The next morning, Mister Smedlock busted into Mary's room with her breakfast. Ugh. Mary exclaimed, "Mary, looking at the porridge, what's that? It looks disgusting. I won't eat it." Mister Smedlock sighed at the pale, skinny child, swamped by the big bed. "Just drink your milk, then," she said, "and you can go out." "I don't want to," retorted Mary. Well, if you don't, you'll be stuck in here, and there's nothing to go do inside," snapped Mister Smedlock. Mary took a while to get dressed. She always had servants to dress her before, but finally she was ready. Mister Smedlock showed her way to the gardens, and she wandered out past Wintry. Flower beds and tre- trees clip into strange shapes. The only person she could see was an old man digging. Who are you? demanded Mary. Ben Weatherstaff. He growled. What's in there? Mary asked, pointing to a crumbling, ivy-covered wall behind them. Ah, said Ben. Then that's the secret garden, Mister Craven. Shut it up. Why? Asked Mary. Ben looked sad. It was Mister Craven's special garden, and she loved it. But she died, and the master was so unhappy he buried the key and went away. As he spoke, a robin flew up to Ben. His wrinkled face creased into a smile. There's no door, Ben went on, but that doesn't stop this once. The robin cooked its head on one side and looked at Mary. Ah, this robin looked adorable. See, I get a little closer. Do you see the robin? Really cute. So, what?、Mm. Enchanted, she whispered. Will you be friends with me? So, Ben murmured. You can be friendly. It sounds just like Dickon talking to his animals. Who's Dickon? Dickon, said Mary. He's a the brother of a maid here, said Ben. Dickon. Can grow flowers out of stones and charm the birds. Even deer love Dickon. Wow. Hmm. Planting, grow flowers out of stones. Stone isn't a seed. How magical! I think he got superpowers or something. But Ben was growing impatient. Run along now," he said. "I've got work to do." The robin flew off. 
Mary followed him. Please, Robin, show me the way to the garden, she begged. The robin chirruped and hopped up and down on the ground. He's telling me something, thought Mary. She scrabbled in soil and saw a half-hidden a rusty ring. Picking it up, she saw it wasn't a ring at all. It was the key. It's the key to the secret garden. I think, as I hear, Rusty, I think it's gonna be. Mr. Craven has been buried it a long time ago. Super long. I never stop long. <laughs> I think. When Mr. Craven died a long time ago, Mr. Craven started digging up when Mary was small. I think so. Or, or it had been even longer than that, ages ago, or something. Even every morning, Mary jumped out of bed, ready, sir. To search for a way into the garden, I have a key. She told herself, "I just need to find the door." Mister Smedlock noticed a charge in her. She looked downright pretty now, with her rosy cheeks. She thought she was so plain and scrawny at first. One day, the winter trees were beginning. To blossom, and the wind came in, sweet scented gust, and from a moor, the robin fluttered down and hop, hop along beside Mary. Mary never knew if what happened next was magic. A gust of wind lifted a patch of ivy, ivy to reveal an old wooden door. I knew it. It's gonna be from long time ago.、Mm. Mary put the key in the lock and turned it with both hands and pushed. Slowly, the door creaked open. She was inside the secret garden. It was a mysterious place, a hazy, frosty tangle of rose branches. That trail the wall and spread along the ground. Everything looked dyly. Every plant, when it spring, they sprout up happily and standing straight. But in this story, I see it stand down just like it's dry, or die, or dead. Hundreds of green spiky shoots. Thrust up through the withered, withered grass. This isn't complete, completely dead. She whispered. I am glad. The shoots looked so crowded that she began to clear spaces around them. The robin chirped as though pleased someone was gardening here at last. Mary worked for hours. It must be lunch time. She thought hungrily. I better go in before Mister Smedlock start looking for me. Racing back after lunch, she noticed Ben was talking to a curly-haired boy, with a phone by his side. As the boy walked away, he played a tune. On a rough wooden pipe, shyly, Mary went up to him. "Are you Deacon?" "I am," he grinned. "And you, Mary? Ben told me about you." She looked so friend, friendly and kind. Mary felt he could, she could trust him. "Can you keep a secret, Deacon?" Deacon chuckled. I keep secrets all the time, 
If I told where a wild animal lives and birds make their nests, they would be safe. I found a secret garden, she said quickly. I think it's mostly dead. I'm the only person who wants it to live. Come and see. She led him through the ivy curtain, and didn't look around, amazed. I never thought I'd see this place. He murmured, "It's like being in a dream." He, he scrambled, he scrambled a rose branch with his pocket knife. There's a green underneath, he said. Those roses are alive. Some dead woods need cutting. That's all. Mary danced around the garden in delight. It will be a fountain of roses come summer," said Dickon. "We'll add more plants too: snapdragons, larkspur, love, and a mist. We'll have the prettiest in garden in England." Will you really help? Asked Mary. She could hardly believe it. Of course, he replied. It's fun shut in here, waking up a garden. A cry in the night. Every day they work in the garden. I want. I don't want it to too tidy. Mary decided. It won't feel like a secret garden then. A secret, sure enough," said Dickon. "Look, the robin's building a nest. He wouldn't do that unless he felt safe." I feel safe and happy here too," Mary confided. "But I used to be angry all the time. Nobody liked me." Dickon. Dickon Paul nuzzled Mary's hand, and he laughed. "There's someone who likes you," he said. "So does the robin, and so do I." That night, lying in bed, Mary heard a violin rage. "I don't hate it now," she realized. She thought of the wind animals on the moor. Snuggled in their holes, protect from a blast. Suddenly, she was alert, listening. Where's that noise again? She thought, crying. It's not in the wind. Where is it coming from? Gripping her bedside candle, she followed the sound down shadowy passages until she reached. A door with a glimmer light up beneath. Quietly, she opened the door. A fire burning in a gate threw a dim light on a huge carved bed. Hmm. In the bed was a boy, so sobbing. Dark eyes stared from an ivory white face. Are you a ghost? He whimpered. No," said Mary. "Are you?" "I'm Colin Craven," said the boy. Mary gasped. "Mr. Craven's my uncle. I'm Mary Lennox." "Well, Mr. Craven, my father," said Colin. Mary looked at him in as astonishment. "Why isn't Mr. Smedlock tell me about you?" He don't let people talk about me," Colin said, "because I'm going to die." Oh no! Mary was horrified. "What's wrong with you?" Colin sighed. "How weak! You won't die from that," Mary scoffed. And my father didn't even care," Colin went on. "If he hasn't heard, he hates me because my mother died when I was born." They can't bear to look at me, just like the secret garden," Mary said. "What garden? Your mother's garden," Mary explained. "Your father shut it up when after she died. I I have it unlocked." Colin 
announced grandly. No, cried Mary. Why not? Then everyone would go in it. It wouldn't be a secret any more. Never mind," said Colin dreadfully. "I never see it anyway." "Yes, you will," argued Mary. "You go outside, don't you?" "Never," said Colin. "I can't cope with the cold air. Don't forget, I'm dying." Mary felt he was rather proud of this, and she didn't like it. "Don't talk about death all the time," she said. Think of the of other things. Her voice dropped into a whisper. Think of a sun and rain and buds bursting into flower. Think of a new garden leaves. Think of a secret garden coming alive. Gradually, Colin's eyes closed, and Mary crept away. The next morning, Mary had to see if she dreamed at all. She burst into Colin's room and pulled back the curtains, flooding into the room with sunlight. Colin sat up in bed and smiled. "I just realized," he said, "we're cousins. We're talking so loudly we didn't hear Mister Smedlock come in." I told you not to go poking around," she shouted. At Mary, go back to you your room at once. No, Colin ordered. I like her. I want her to stay with me. She'll tire you out," said Miss Medlock. "Come along, Mary. Do what I say," screamed the call. Screamed Colin. Leave Mary and I get out. Yes, dear," said Mister. Mister. Smedlock, trying to sound smoothing. She promised Mister. Craven she would never upset Colin. Hurriedly, she was wintry. You're hor- horrible, horribly, horribly hot, bossy," said Mary. "I used like to be that when I lived in India." But I'm trying to change now. Why should I give give orders? Snapped Colin. I'm the master of this house. What bothers away? Mary got up to leave. Don't go, pleaded Colin. One trace of bossiness gone from his voice. I don't want to be alone. I'll be back later. Mary promised. I have a friend I want you to meet. A few hours later, Mary and Dickton crept into Colin's room. "You've been ages," complained Colin, scowling at them. "Say hello to Dickton," said Mary. "I want you to come out with us. I want to show you a secret." "The garden?" guessed Colin. Mary nodded. "I come," he decided. I rang a bell to summon Mister. Smedlock. I'm going outside. He started. Bring my wheelchair and tell everyone to keep away. Are you sure, dear? She asked anxiously. You and catch a cold. Just do what I say. Colin ordered. Dickton pushed Colin along the path until Mary. Flinging back the ivy, open the garden door. Sunshine lit it up. Sprays of flowers and the air was alive with birdsong. Colin started. I can feel things growing. He gasped. It's spring, said Dickton. And make you feel good. We'll soon have you working in the garden. But I can't even stand," Colin flattered. "Look at his thin legs." "Only because you haven't tried," said Mary. Dickton helped Colin with his feet. "Try now, Colin. You can walk. You really can," urged Mary.、Mm. Unsteadily, 
and clinging to Dickton, Colin forced his weak limbs to move. The others saw a pale face grow rosy in the sunlight. "Mary Dickton," he cried, "I'm going to get well. I can't think it." Every day they played and worked in the garden, and every day Colin grew stronger. By the time spring turned to summer, he was completely well. But, but three of them, or、uh, pretend he was still ill. No one must know. Colin insisted. I want to surprise my father. If only he come home. Colin began to wish, "Come home, come home." One night, Colin's father, far away in Italy, had a strange dream. He heard his dead wife calling his name. "Where are you?" he pleaded. "In the garden," came the reply, sound like the sound from a golden flute. Hmm. Mr. Craven woke. He determined to repair, return his manner at once. Where's Colin? He demanded. The minute he arrived home, Mr. Matlock gasped, shocked at his suddenly sudden appearance. He plays in the garden, sir, with Marion Dickton. She said in a shaky voice. No one allowed near them. In the garden," thought Mr. Craven. "I dream." As he hurried down the path, he heard children laughing in his wife's old garden. The door locked and the keys buried. He told himself, "I must still be dreaming." Suddenly, the door burst open, and Colin and Mary dashed out. "Father, you're here!" cried Colin. Mr. Craven hugged his son tight. "Is it really you? You're well. However, did it happen?" "It was the garden," said Colin and Mary. "I thought the garden would be dead," murmured his father. "It came alive," said Mary. Mr. Craven smiled, and so was Colin. He said, "Thank you, Mary." And so. It's the end. I really like your song. If you're blind, you can hear. You can still hear. If you're deaf, you can turn on the supplies and and read it. But if you are nothing, you can just look or see. Bye, everyone. Got a good day. Actually, it's a story, not really for reading. It's for bedtime stories.